Folkestone is an art school. This episode is about expression. You can't express something unless you have something to say. What have you got to say? Have you formed an opinion? And are you ready to tell it to the world? Folkestone is an art school. 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 I'm drawing this uh, concrete works in Battersea in the sand in Folkestone as, my, uh, as a tribute to my mother who grew up in a seaside town. I was inspired by visuality to go on quite an amazing journey where she went to the Royal College of Art during the Second World War and became a distinguished British artist. But during the 1970s, when she painted this painting, she was a bit depressed <laughs> that perhaps her art wasn't paying the dividends that she thought it might when she was a child. And as she came from a seaside place, much like Folkestone, she came from Margate, which is just down the coast. I thought it would be nice to make a piece of work which was uh, reminiscent of that journey from a childhood by the seaside in the mid-1930s to a grown woman in the 1970s making rather melancholy paintings of cement works in South London. I'm not sure if the tide's going out or the tide's coming in on this memory of my mother's painting. Folkestone is a home to thousands of people. It's also a seaside town, but it's also an art school. In this section, expression, I want to introduce you to the German uh, philosopher, uh, political theorist, Hannah Arendt. 
Here she is, this is Hannah, Hannah Arendt, and she was Heidegger's girlfriend. In the 1930s, Heidegger thought Hitler had some pretty groovy ideas, and uh, he shopped, betrayed Hannah Arendt uh, to the Nazis, and she was interviewed, and she, she had to leave Germany and go to Paris. In Paris, she met lots of people in the Frankfurt School, people like uh, Adorno and Walter Benjamin. When Germany overran France, uh, Hannah Arendt was interred in a Jewish concentration camp and Walter Benjamin tried to escape and committed suicide on the Pyrenees. But Hannah Arendt managed to escape from the internment camp, Camp Gers outside Paris, and made it to Paris, uh, made it to New York and Princeton. And after the war, she became the first female professor in Princeton. In Princeton, she tried to work out why Germany had fallen to the Nazis. And uh, her principal conclusion was that democracy is defended when human beings are able to perform, participate, and associate. And those three ideas have a powerful resonance for artists and journalists working in democracies today. But in terms of art making, these three things, all art making, is in some sense an element. It's a performance, it involves your participation, and what you want to do when you show it to people is that you want to create some kind of association. So these three elements are really important for thinking about contemporary art. So let's have a look and think about artworks that we might make using some other elements, bringing some other elements into this notion that this is about agency. Performance, participation and association is about agency. Things happen and things are protected when people start enacting these things. So these are agents of change, but they're also agents of democracy. Let's think about senses. So we think about the world through our senses and we understand the world through our senses and actually we understand art through our senses. Sight, sound, touch, taste and smell. So let's think, oh we want to make a work of art that people can taste. What would be the subject? Now these are different subjects and actions. So it might be that we want to make a work of art that people can taste, which has to do with, well let's not do sex, but let's do family union, charity, work, conversation. I'm not going to come up with uh, an artwork right now that's to do with that. But let's think taste, an artwork which is about conversation. Maybe that's an artwork which is a dinner party. An artwork which is a dinner party would be wonderful, wouldn't it? And then these are the needs and conditions to devise an artwork which is a dinner party which involves participation, uh, 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 eating and conversation and taste, well, perhaps you would need to have some of the conditions. These might be the, some of the conditions for art. There are lots of others, but these are a few. Deep looking. We all need blank time. We all need space to think. Space when perhaps the social media accounts and telephones are turned off. Uh, blank time, blank paper, sleep, rest is important, but we also need stimulation. Those are really conditions which you might need to have in order to devise a really great dinner party artwork. And here are some other ideas and other forms which you might want to think about, or you could think about, or artists have thought about in terms about making art. So we could think about artworks which are maps. What would a map of a dinner party be like, which involved a lot of participation? Perhaps that map, we would need to devise a diagram. Perhaps it wouldn't be just a dinner party, which might be a film. It could be interdisciplinary. So it could be about sound. So perhaps we record the sound of a dinner party. 
It could be about unexpectedness. This might be about context. Where does something happen? If something happens in an expected context, we think it's going to happen. We don't surprise our audience with audiences, but if we do something in an unexpected space, we can really change people's experience. So experience, how do people experience the dinner party? And what are the wants and needs? What do we need to have around us? Is your studio an imagination station? <laughs> Is your studio your imagination station? Maps, diagrams, interdisciplinary activity, and unexpectedness. These are all really important things that you need for up. Oh. And an element of surprise. <laughs>